Bible, which we discussed in Numbers. But it, thank you, babe. But it uh, it comes up again in Deuteronomy, and the exile of Jewish people in Assyria and Babylon foretold in Deuteronomy four. And why did God condone such terrible violence in the Old Testament? You know, as as we read. Uh, the Old Testament, Numbers, Deuteronomy, uh, Exodus, and, and other books, we we wonder why in the world did this happen, and and we know that, that it was because God loved the the Israelites and He wanted them to to be totally devoted to them, but it, it still bothers us. So I wanted to track it down a little bit more and look for the um, the background. So. I Melba was in and then she disappeared. Okay, hopefully she'll come back again. I'll send another send another invite, make sure I didn't delete her by mistake. So going through Deuteronomy 4 through 6, was there anything that um, popped up that uh, disturbed you guys or caused questions before we dive in? <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Love cuckoo clock. Okay, yeah, we add a lot. <laughs> okay. That's like our um, our Bible teacher from New Hope in De Pere, Wisconsin. He was a an obstetrician, and one of the things he liked to do with all his money was collect cuckoo clocks. Lots of clocks. He had. <laughs> I don't know how many clocks he had. He had a lot of Bibles too. So, there's oh, Melba. Melba. Yeah, there's Melba. Hi, Melba. I, I didn't know if I clicked the admit button or clicked the delete button for you, Melba, so I invited you again. I wasn't sure. I thought it was me. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we have um, a lot to go through, and lately Zoom has been keeping our meetings to 40 minutes, so... I'll try to keep us um, try to keep us on track. Now, so, Pastor, you asked about if something was interesting. Yes. I thought on our notes on page two at the bottom, the difference between an icon and an idol. Yes. That is interesting, and you know about the Catholics and Mary, and that's kind of a puzzlement. Yeah, um, and and unfortunately. Um, statues of Mary and, and that kind of stuff, unfortunately, that's not an icon um, because they're praying directly to Mary, which we know um, we shouldn't do. Um, we, we also shouldn't pray to saints either because we have direct access to, to, uh, to God after Jesus died on the cross. We're, we're told that the, the temple curtain was torn from top to bottom and that gives us complete access to God. You know, re regardless of, of which curtain was torn in the temple, um, we either have uh, entrance to worship, which would be the first curtain, or if it was the second curtain um, entering to the Holy of Holies, that means we have direct access to God now. So we can pray directly to Him. We don't have to pray to anybody else. Uh, plus are like the little statues they used to carry around, right? R idols could be little statues, they could be big statues, they could be anything. And the the thing about the idol is you're praying to the idol, you're worshiping the idol, where an icon, it's, it's something that you're praying through to reach something else that means something. Like intercession? No, 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 no. Um, it would be like a picture, but you're not praying to the picture. You're praying to God through the picture. It's something that should inspire you. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I remember one time somebody asked, why are you praying to the cross? And I said, I'm not praying to the cross. I'm praying because the cross reminds me of Je what Jesus did for me, that he died on the cross to save my soul. Okay. And um, in the Orthodox denomination, Russian Orthodox and Greek Orthodox, sometimes the icons, uh, the pictures are, are even fuzzy 
or or not clear so you're not focusing on the picture you're focusing on what is supposed to be behind it so good point Jean good point do Catholics think that Mary is an intercessor yeah 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 um and uh, <laughs> after spending the first 50 years of my life as a Catholic, uh, you do a lot of praying to, to Mary. And um, it's unfortunate. On our, our wedding day, I went over to yeah. Mary, left flowers, and yeah. prayed for a good marriage. Well, Ave Maria sang for that. Whereas I went to the Joseph side and prayed to the Joseph statue, the St. Joseph statue, to be a good husband and father. Right, right. So, yeah. yeah. It's one, one of the things that started me thinking and saying, this isn't right. It's not right. Glad you saw the light. Yeah, and, and, and like I said before, it caused me to, to, uh, to get an F in senior religion in high school. So my dad straightened me out about that. Anyway. Um, one of the things that we see right away in Deuteronomy, verse 2, God tells us, do not add to what I command and do not subtract from it. Well, unfortunately, we know that, that the Pharisees and the Jewish priests, they added a lot more um, rules and regulations to the, uh, the Ten Commandments. And that's, that's not what God intended at all. What they did is they made the, the commands so burdensome for, for the people that nobody could keep them. Uh, they even had a rule where, uh, remember when Jesus was healing um, on the Sabbath, they said you can't heal on the Sabbath. Uh, their rule was if somebody was bleeding or injured, you could stop the bleeding, but that's all you could do. If it was on the Sabbath, you couldn't completely heal that person. So their rules were really twisted. So God tells us, do not add to what I command, and don't subtract either. God tells us exactly what we have to do, and we need to follow those commands. Now, we don't follow those for salvation because we know we can't, and that's why Jesus died for us. Jesus died for us, and belief in that is the only thing that saves us. Following the Ten Commandments, that shows our obedience to God, not that it's going to save us, but that we're obedient to Him. And we, we try our best. Um, in verse 4, well, uh, verses 3 and 4, uh, Moses is telling the, the second generation, and that's the whole purpose of, of a lot of Deuteronomy, is to, is to restate what happened in the, the 40 years in the desert. Because all the first generation died, except for uh, Joshua and um, the next... That's our, sorry. Huh? That's our clock, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, I forgot the other, the other uh, guy that lived in addition to Moses. And so he has to re-explain what happened. And he's telling them, even though they didn't see with their own eyes, the people... The first generation saw what the Lord did at Baal Peor. The Lord your God destroyed from among you everyone who followed the Baal of Peor. But all of you held fast to the Lord are still alive today. And the ones that held fast to the Lord were Joshua and um, Eleazar. And I can't remember the name of the, the other young Israelite who stood by um, Moses. Oh well. Would it be in your notes here? No, no. Oh. Um, it was it was the other the other guy who was with Joshua when they sent the spies in to the promised land. Oh yeah yeah. Caleb? Caleb, thank you. Caleb. It's so hard to get old, right? You forget names, you forget everything. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> So what Moses is saying is all of you who held fast to the Lord your God that day are still alive. So everyone who stood by him is still alive, in addition to the, the Levites. The Levites, of course, uh, stood by Moses um, in the golden calf incident, and they, of course, are still alive. Um, verse 7, 
what, and this could apply to, <laughs> this could apply to us or any other country, what other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us? Um, God has been traveling with the Israelites since the, the moment they left Egypt. And uh, in comparison to the, the Canaanites, they could just pray to the small g gods and their God was never with them. Here we know that God was with the Israelites the whole way. What other nation? Now, even though Moses was addressing the Israelite nation here, God's laws apply to all people to guide us in, in healthy, God-focused lifestyles. So even though um, Moses in verse 8 is talking right to the Israelites, all of God's people, all people, should still listen to the Ten Commandments. Um, God gave the Israelites some other laws to guide them in the wilderness, but those laws have lapsed. So think of eating pork. Think of eating shrimp. A lot of the laws that, that God gave them, other laws, um, were for, for health and safety. Things that they shouldn't do while they're in the desert because they didn't know how to use those things. So whenever somebody uh, brings up, um, well, we don't, we, we can eat cheeseburgers now, so none of the other laws that, that God provided are... Uh, are uh, relevant right now. Well, that's not true. God meat didn't... Meat and dairy couldn't be together. Right. Meat and dairy couldn't because they didn't know how to cook them. A lot of times people ate meat raw. So you know what happens when you eat raw, raw pork or when you eat raw beef or when you have cross-contamination. We know now you can't do that. Back then they didn't know that. So some of those laws have lapsed Others have not. <clears throat> um, verse 9. Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to your children after them. This is, in, I, stay, I say it a couple times in Deuteronomy, that this is why religion and the, um, the teaching of religion was so successful in early Israel is that it was part of their, their daily life. They always talked about it. They always talked about their faith. They always talked about keeping the Ten Commandments. And they, they, uh, it was integrated into their daily lifestyle. So they would never be away from their religion. You think now, the way the world is now, where so very few people even know about God, if we, if we start talking about God more often and what he's done for us, then I think people will start paying more attention. But this is one of the reasons why it was so successful, religion was so successful and important in Israel. Okay. <clears throat> Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. And like I said, as, I'm, as we're going through Deuteronomy, Moses is telling the story exactly what happened. If you remember, when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, God says, everybody should come to the mount at Horeb, but only go so far. And then he called Moses up and Joshua. Joshua went a little bit farther, then Moses went up ahead, and everybody heard the voice of God through the fire and through the smoke, but they couldn't see him. So that's what Moses is describing in verse 12. In verse 13, God declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments. Um, and this is what happened in Exodus 19 and 20, where God gave them the, the Ten Commandments. Uh, and then we get into um, this, like a, a, the prelude to the Ten Commandments. You saw no form, in verse 15, of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you. So what God is saying is, I have no form. Don't try to make any kind of idol and pray to it, because anything you make is going to be... Um, it's not going to be a, a representation of, of my glory. 
So that's one of the reasons why there, we can't have any idols, because nothing could look as glorious as God. Do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshiping um, things. We are to worship only God, not the things that he created. You know, uh, in here it says, don't look up to the sky, don't look up to the moon, don't look up to the stars, because that's what the Egyptians did. They had their sun god, they had, their, they had so many gods that they worshipped because they didn't understand. They looked up and they thought, oh, well, this is what created everything. The sun makes things grow, so we should worship the sun. They didn't realize that God created everything, so instead of worshipping an intermediary and worshipping the sun, go right to the source. So God's saying, don't, don't worship anything but me. Here's where Moses gets in trouble, verse 21. And we talked about this last week, too. Uh, last week, in the first three, ver th first three chapters, Moses was blaming the people uh, for the reason he can't get into the promised land. Mm. And here in verse 21, he says again, The Lord was angry with me because of you. Well, sure, Moses overreacted because of the people, got them mad, but actually it was Moses' fault. Um, in Numbers chapter 20, verses 1 through 13, God told Moses just to speak to the rock and bring water out of it. But instead, Moses struck the rock twice, and he even took credit for causing the water to come out of it. In Numbers chapter 20, verse 10, he says to the Israelites, Listen, you rebels, must we bring water out of this rock? So he and, and Aaron are taking credit for what God did, bringing water out of the rock. That's why he wasn't allowed into the promised land. So he, he's got to stop blaming people. Was he, excuse me. Yeah. Was he taking credit or was he saying that he was equal to God and he and God were taking credit? Yeah. Taking credit along with God? Yeah, either way he's wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah, Melba, I think, I think he was taking credit for it, and I think he was saying, me and Aaron are bringing water for you out of the rock. Okay? So, I, yeah, I think, he, I think he made a big mistake there. And also, if you guys have any questions, stop me. Okay? Stop me, ask the questions. That's one of the good things about Zoom is um, we can all talk at the same time. There's other programs where only one person can talk at a time, and that's not, not too useful. So this is working out well. Um, oh, here. This, this, um, this phrase used to bother me, but it doesn't anymore. Um, that's why it's always helpful. Whenever you read Scripture, if something bothers you, uh, dig deep and try to find out what it really means or, or ask somebody. So, a jealous God, to me, that kind of hit me wrong because jealousy is a bad thing. But here's, here's why it's okay. Um, in, in the instance of God, God is, is demanding our exclusive love and worship. And... <laughs> So, so that's why it's okay for him to be a jealous God. He created us, so he has the right to demand exclusive love. Um, when I was researching this, I thought back to when I was first dating Christy, and she was dating at least three guys, right? <laughs> so I told her, drop all three. That's that's the that's the worst thing about being related to a pastor. Sometimes you get used in in sermons and and lessons. <laughs> but uh, and and thank and, and thank the Lord that Christy didn't tell me to get lost. She actually gave up those guys. So made me a very happy person. But you were jealous, yeah. Oh, shh. awful, awful. I had fun. I was having a good time. Yeah. You yeah. bought me dinner. Yep. We played tennis. Yep. It was fun. I was a, I was an awfully jealous person. 
uh, so I, I understand where this is coming from. So yeah, now I understand that that I I was a little cuckoo. Yes, yes, I was a little cuckoo. Um, but yeah, uh, God God demands our exclusive love. That's another reason why we shouldn't have idols, why we should worship Him first, because He created us. He, he gave us everything. So I no longer have a problem with that. Uh, let's see, verse 26. Let's see. I call the heavens and earth as witnesses against you on this day. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, the reason why this is important is that Numbers chapter 35, verse 30, it tells us that you need at least two witnesses to make any case stick. So that's why Moses uses heavens and the earth. And he's not, he's not calling upon the stars in heaven or anything on earth. What he's calling is God who is both on heaven, in the heavens, and on earth. That's what he's doing here. So was Moses one of the first judges? Um, not, not, well, yes and no. Um, he, he was a judge. He settled the cases that the people had. But yeah. he's, he's not a judge if you think about the book of Judges okay. that we're going we're, we're gonna to talk about in who knows when we get to it. Um, so, yeah, yes and no. Okay. Um, oh, okay. And verse 27. Um, that's why I have the extra um, supplement for the exile of the Jewish people in Assyria and Babylon. Because what Moses is doing here in verse 27, oh, a gift from Zoom. They just removed our 40 minute time limit. Yay! <laughs> all right, so we could be here all night. So um, Moses, God is, God is giving Moses a vision. He's telling the Israelites, the Lord will scatter you among the peoples and only a few of you will survive among the nations to which the Lord will drive you. And this is exactly what happened in Assyria and Babylon. Um, the Assyrians and the Babylonians, what they did is, when they invaded Israel, they took only the best, the brightest, and the richest and moved them to Babylon and Assyria. The people they had no use for, they left in Israel. And... Um, some of those people didn't come back. They either died in Assyria or Babylon, and some chose not to come back. They enjoyed their new life in Assyria and Babylon so much, they didn't want to come back to Israel. So that's what Moses is saying in verse 27. He had a, he had a prophecy. And there you will worship man-made gods like they tried to make Daniel um, and his friends do, uh, which you cannot see or hear or eat or smell. Uh, but if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and all your soul. That's what happened to Daniel. Daniel didn't worship the gods. He, he continued to seek um, Yahweh, and he was able to survive. So, a little bit of prophecy in Deuteronomy. Um, anything so far that you guys have questions on? or um, interest you, or you want to know a little bit more about? Well, Moses is reiterating everything from Numbers because he's in a whole new generation of people. Yes. So this is like the recap of what's happened. Right, right. Okay, then I'm fine. Okay. I get it. Yeah, and um, sometimes we would... Um, maybe rush through certain sections that we think are redundant, but we should never do that because there's always a reason for the redundancy. Um, we're going to see that again in Chronicles, where there'll, there'll be uh, a repetition of some of the things in the Old Testament because the, the, 
the chronicler is telling the history. So once again, we shouldn't brush over that because I'm sure we're going to find something interesting there. Okay. Let's see here. Um, okay, that's it's my ah cities of refuge. Okay, so in Numbers we talked about cities of refuge, and uh, that's when they established this, the six cities. And uh, when we, if you look at the supplement, you read the supplement later, you'll see that there were six cities. There were three cities um, in the Promised Land, and there were three cities outside the Promised Land. Uh, and that's just to give people an opportunity to, to be safe. Um, and that was for only unintentional killing. So, and the, the refuge uh, supplement explains all that. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, in introduction to the law, once again, Moses is just telling them the law because this is the second generation. They don't know it yet. They aren't familiar with it. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 44, all the way through Deuteronomy 26, it's devoted to the task of introducing, proclaiming, and elaborating in detail the commandments of God. So we're going to see the Ten Commandments again over and over in detail. I should have numbered my pages. Let's see here. Okay. Syriac. Uh, footnote 19 is just a different name. Dead Sea is the Reed Sea. Ah, okay, Deuteronomy 5, the Ten Commandments. So here's where we start getting into some good details. So here Moses is saying, hear, learn, and follow. He's giving the Israelites three things to do and, and really focus on the laws. Here, they must accept and absorb God's commands. Not just, not just listen to them, but actually hear what Moses is saying. Learn. They must understand the meaning and the implications of God's laws. Because if they don't understand the implications for the Ten Commandments and why they need to follow them, they might be more likely to break them. And if they break the laws, all heck breaks loose. And of course, we know they break the laws, and that's why they have trouble in the future. That's why they get taken over by Assyria and Babylon, and things don't go well for them. And follow them. You can't just hear them, you got to follow them. Um, like James says in the book of James, don't only read the scriptures, do what they say. So Moses is trying to impress on these guys, you have to do this. You have to listen to the Ten Commandments. And he's, he's telling them that the Ten Commandments weren't just for our ancestors, they're for everybody alive today. And he's, he's speaking not only to the Israelites, but to us also. That the Ten Commandments are up for us even now. Verse 7. Uh, you shall have no other gods before me. So what, what God is saying is... Um, let's see here. Um, some, some progressive theologians say that since this command is addressed specifically to the Israelites, the you brought out of Egypt, that other other people, not Christians, could worship other small g gods. Um, that that's where we get into um, the blending of religions. You know, um, a person that comes to mind is Oprah. Uh, she she has.